In tonight's cover story, The Art of War, in one of the lesser known chapters of World War II history, a unit of artists and engineers had one job, to create battlefield illusions to trick Hitler and the Germans. And one of the few surviving members of that unit is a Chicago area artist recently honored with the Congressional Gold Medal. And WGN's Mike Lowe has the incredible story of Bernie Bluestein and the Ghost Army. The Seated Silhouette. I'm 98, I will be 99 next month. Recalls an afternoon almost 80 years ago. Bernie Bluestein was a 19-year-old art student. He spotted a sort of help wanted ad posted on the bulletin board outside of a college classroom in Cleveland. I noticed on the bulletin board it said that the uh, Army was looking for young, young artists for a new unit that was being formed and uh, they would be doing camouflage work. It was 1943 as World War II raged. The United States Army was recruiting a new top secret unit that would attempt to trick the Nazis. The thing that hit me the most was uh, there were a couple of words in there that said it is a non-fighting unit and that interested me quite a bit. The Schaumburg resident went to basic training and then passed a special course on creating camouflage. He was placed with 1,100 others in a mysterious enterprise known simply as the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops. Well, all they said at that particular time is that we were going to do camouflage work. All the details of how they were going to use us and everything else was never explained to us. They were a band of engineers, painters, and architects constructing a dummy army and perfecting the art of deception. So we learned how to camouflage equipment, how to uh, make fake equipment, guns, tanks, trucks. We made it out of wood and then we covered it with burlap and then painted it in camouflage colors. They operated on the battlefield and earned the nickname, the Ghost Army. If you think about the ghosts in this way, all those real soldiers aren't there. It's, it's just sort of the ghosts of soldiers because there's only a few actual real living soldiers uh, carrying out this deception. And then they kind of slip away, they're ethereal. Rick Beyer is an author, historian, and filmmaker. I like to refer to them as a traveling roadshow of deception. But this roadshow has as its audience the enemy, a bunch of people who want to kill you. So you better be convincing because they're paying attention. And if you get it wrong, it could mean your life or thousands of other lives. The unit staged more than 20 deceptions, including on D-Day and in Operation Viersen, where the 1,100 ghosts simulated 40,000 troops. The purpose of this was to, to deceive the uh, Germans. It was the Ghost Army's final mission in 1945. They convinced the Germans that U.S. troops were planning to cross the Rhine River about 10 miles north of where they actually attacked. Bluestein was there. It was the crossing of the Rhine, and there we simulated two divisions, two infantry divisions. We had fake patches on our arms, and we pulled into the town, and what we had with us was radio equipment that broadcast the sounds of truck movement, trucks and tanks and everything. So the people didn't know, they couldn't see us, but they heard all this. They thought, oh my gosh, there are a lot of soldiers coming into town. The idea is you're leaving a bunch of clues for the enemy, and then you expect the enemy to put them together and figure it out and say, oh, look how smart I am. I figured out what the Americans are doing, but it's all false. Word finally did get back to the Germans because the following morning, right after I had left the mess tent, about 15 minutes afterwards, lo and behold, we were shelled by the Germans. We knew that was a success. We all applauded and said we accomplished our mission. The Germans had wasted resources fighting a phantom, while the real U.S. troops crossed into Germany unchecked. It's estimated the Ghost Army saved between 15 and 30,000 American lives. The Ghost Army's existence, though, was virtually unknown to history. This was held secret. It was held secret. My parents never knew where I was. I mean, we weren't able to tell them our location and what we did. My parents used to say, well, what do you do in this camouflage division? And my answer was, well, we do camouflage work. <laughs> it was just as loose as that. It wasn't until 1996 that the records were unclassified. Specially qualified men are taught a highly specialized type of warfare, sonic warfare. Deception of the enemy is, of course, as old as war itself. 
the kind that's taught here, organized combat deception is new. It was only this year that this unsung unit that helped win the war started to also win some recognition. Mounted in this vehicle, 800 pounds of sonic equipment can simulate hundreds of tons of armored vehicles. In February, President Joe Biden signed a bill awarding them the Congressional Gold Medal. One of the nation's highest honors for pioneering war tactics and using art to save lives. Art, artistry, performance, creativity, those don't sound like weapons, but they were used in this case to save lives, help win the war. And that's what makes it such an incredible story and such an inspiring story and why we should remember it uh, forever. It's so important to do this for Bernie while he's still alive. I mean, the ghost army is turning into an army of ghosts and, and they're gonna be gone soon. The intelligence, courage, and bravery demonstrated by you and the rest of the Ghost Army on the battlefield cannot be overstated. Bluestein was recognized last weekend in a ceremony at Harper College in Palatine, where he has taken art courses for the last three decades. And I'm just highly honored, feel humble about all the attraction it's getting. I am really sorry about one thing, that there are eight more of us that I know of that are still living. I wish the rest of the 1,100 men in our outfit could have gotten this recognition in, in person and heard about it. Now, outside of his Harper College art classroom, there is another posted notice. This one with Bernie Bluestein's name, a lasting tribute to an army of artists who brought new meaning to the term theater of war. In Palatine, Mike Lowe, WGN News. Remarkable how that subterfuge was so effective and how mm -hmm. it stayed a secret for so long. Incredible.